Okay, so we are back with another episode talking all things five Hyrox components. Listen, if you tackle all of these Hyrox components, you're gonna be in a good spot when it comes to progressing your Hyrox journey. Now, obviously there's more moving parts to it than that. Um, you know, there needs to be a few things in your training. There needs to be structure. There needs to be an element of periodization, progressive overload. But if you can really think about attacking these five main focuses for high rocks and really simplifying that process, then you're gonna be making loads and loads of progress in time for your next race, okay? So let's talk about the first component, which is obviously strength. So high rocks requires strength. The sleds is probably the main strength element to high rocks. So we need to be practicing and making sure that we are gaining enough strength, okay? So you're probably wondering, well, okay, how do I attack the strength aspect of my training? So first and foremost, we wanna be thinking about firstly entering ultimate strength. So, you know, your absolute strength is gonna be your three by threes, you know, your three rep maxes. You wanna be incorporating movements like back squats. You wanna be incorporating movements such as hip thrusts, which are really gonna obviously activate the posterior muscles that are gonna support your sled pull. You wanna be incorporating a lot of bench press, a lot of pulling movements as well, like bent over rows. You can always check out my Instagram. I'm always putting out workouts. Um, also, if you hit the link below, you'll also be able to actually get a seven day free trial on my Hyrox Perform program, which could actually give you a little bit of an idea as to you know how to actually implement this stuff. So just one before I forget. Um, also, we wanna be not just thinking about absolute strength, we wanna be thinking about actually, okay, now, Let's put some of that strength in a compromised setting. So can we now actually put a little bit of aerobic work in there and actually pre-fatigue the strength, okay? So actually, you know, a couple of 800 meters into back squats or 600 meters into bench press. So the heart rate's up and then you're having to, you know, really, really deliver that strength component, okay? And that's gonna be very much more realistic to high rocks. Um, and then obviously practicing the sleds. So I'm asked all the time, you know, how do I train for sleds? And yes, there are movements you can do to help with your sled work. Definitely things like Bulgarian split squats, uh, front rack uh, reverse lunges, those kind of single leg strength movements are gonna really help with your sleds. But ultimately, you know, you can't ever train the sled as good as having a sled. So um, definitely try and, you know, get yourself a sled if you can. But you wanna be training your sleds. My biggest piece of advice, as any probably Hyrox coach will tell you, a Hyrox athlete will tell you, always train for heavier than competition weight. This is gonna be a big piece of advice I'd give to anybody because there's so many people who just feel different because the carpet and different kind of, you know, movable um, dynamics to the race. So I would say always, always have at least one day a week in your strength training phase where you're actually gonna, you know, train heavier than high rocks weight, okay? So that ticks off strength. We wanna be really incorporating. There's some movements put in there as well that you guys can, can really kind of incorporate. Um, and then it moves on to point number two or component for high rocks number two is skill set okay so like any sport you know it requires skill your wall balls require skill your burpees require skill and anyone can do it anyone can get through a high rocks but when you're trying to race faster how do we incorporate more skill okay how do we develop skill okay and it's the same with any sport you, you develop skill by practice all right so there's two real points to skill set and how you can incorporate skill set as you move forward okay number one is technique so how can I make this technique even better? Like, how can I perform this? Remember, there are movement standards in high rocks as well. And if you're not hitting those standards, it could be, you know, game over on the wall balls if you're getting 10 no reps, because that, tell me about it, where at the end of that race, it's a lot, it's a lot if you get no rep, okay? So your technique and your efficiency, okay? They go hand in hand, really. Efficiency on burpees is gonna be your step-in technique rather than jumping in at the bottom of your rep. That's gonna not allow the legs to fall into, you know, a really heavy fatigue state. It's gonna allow you efficiency as you move forward, for example, all right? Um, also, skill set related clusters, okay? So can you break down your wall balls into 10 reps at a time rather than just getting there, doing 30 or 40 and then having to keep them stopping and having more and more recovery because you've kind of redlined that, that set, okay? So clusters and having some race strategy is all part of your skill set for high rocks, okay? So it's not just the individual movements, it's actually you being skillful enough up here to know how you're gonna attack that race and all the strategy around it, okay? Um, 
Three more things. Number one, sorry, number three is mix model strength endurance. Okay, so you got you got essentially mix model is combination of everything. Okay, um, so combination strategy is incorporating runs as well as your rowing, as well as your skiing, as well as your lunges, as well as your burpees, as well as everything. So combination doesn't always have to mean high rocks movements, by the way. Okay, so for example, we help a lot of our high rocks athletes to understand that actually if they train thrusters in a heavy setting, mixed in with running, etc., the wall balls when it gets to a six kilo ball is gonna feel like a piece of air. I'm lying by the way, but anyway. All right, so combination is combining your, your strength endurance movements, you know, high repetition volumes. But like I said, it could be thrusters instead of wall balls. It could be, I don't know, um, you know, box jumps instead of burpees, like lots of different movements you can do that aren't just high rocks related, that are still gonna give you the same stimulus, okay? Um, and high rep volume is a big key here thing, all right? So apart from the sleds, most of high rocks is gonna be high rep volume. Your lunges are a high rep volume, your burpees are high rep volume, and your warbles. So be practicing high repetition volume in these strength endurance sessions. Um, you know, you can keep a lot of it to body weight because obviously, you know, there is a lot of high rocks that is your burpees, etc. Your wall balls aren't necessarily heavy, but body weight is a good start point when you're doing a lot of strength endurance, okay? Um, point number four is your aerobic endurance, okay? So very different to strength endurance. Your aerobic endurance is gonna be like your rowing, your skiing, your running intervals, maybe what I call cyclical as well. So like, you know, it could look like 1,000 meter row, 1,000 meter ski, 2K run, and they could do that twice through. And it's basically just aerobic endurance is just zone two, zone three, steady state, just building that endurance base. So when you get to the last third of that race, you know, you've, you've, you've got a, an advantage on those guys who maybe haven't been doing a lot of endurance base building and then they're tailing off at 40 minutes, okay? And then the last one, first, this probably should have been up here as the top one, okay, is your running, okay? So I've done another YouTube on this, so you can find inside of my YouTube, I've actually done a full High Rocks uh, running uh, episode. But basically, we're gonna be focusing on one, our pace, two, top end threshold, three, steady state runs, which can also be slightly incorporated with this, and then our compromise running as well, okay? So this could be doing 5K, and you're gonna disturb that 5K run every kilometer with, you know, an exercise, all right? So, so this is kind of your five key elements to high rocks progression, you know, and what you're gonna probably find is, you know, some athletes are gonna be coming into high rocks with, with more of one than the other. Like, you know, high rocks is a great sport because you're gonna to have to be a very versatile athlete. You're gonna to have to be able to lift heavy and run fast. You're gonna to have to have endurance without losing strength. And this is where I think sometimes having a, a structured training plan where you know that you can still continue to build strength while also maintaining a good level of endurance is gonna be important because they're very, they have a bit of an, in, an inverse relationship. So when, usually if we don't follow a process and we do a lot of strength, we can lose our aerobic capacity. If we build our aerobic capacity, we can lose a lot of our strength, okay? So the fine line in High Rocks is finding an expert essentially that can probably help you um, to navigate that the best I'm gonna be doing a lot more episodes on how you can actually build your training phases off the back of this, um, which should help. But for now, just know that as long as you are attacking a few of these with some examples here, um, you're gonna be absolutely great and you're gonna be getting a little bit faster for sure. All right, so I'll catch you in the next episode. As always, hit subscribe and I'd love to hear from you if you found this of interest. Again, from me to you with love. Take care.